got to let a little more line out to get down into where the fish are. And when you see that tip go boink, 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 Reel him in. Reel him in. You got him. You got him. <laughs> Keep reeling. Keep reeling. There you go. <laughs> nice fish. I've heard it said that when it comes to memories, people don't recall dates very well. Instead, what we tend to recall are the moments. We remember those little intersections in time when all of the pleasant little details flow together into a harmonious blend. Things like sounds or smells, the way the sun feels upon your skin or simply the laughter of a friend. Good memories are typically not programmed into life. Good memories are made when we allow ourselves to settle down into a moment and allow that moment to unfold at its own pace, its own rhythm. It feels so pretty. But enough of that for the moment. In this episode of My Life, I want to share a memory with you and I also want to tell you a good old-fashioned fishing story. So hang around for a few minutes, and I think you'll be glad you did. It started about a month and a half ago when I decided to pick up an old dream of mine to learn how to ice fish. So after a bit of homework and a few motivational rounds of Steve Ranella's fur hat ice tour, I borrowed a spud bar from a friend, picked up a cheap ice rod, and headed down to the lake, full of hope. Now you have to understand, the lake that I chose, it's a big one. But after chatting with a few locals, I had a pretty decent idea of where to go. So I found my spot, poked a hole in the ice, and settled in for the afternoon. And as much as I would like to tell you that we fried fish that evening, what I got instead was what sportsmen sometimes refer to as skunked. Not a single bite. If we're keeping score at this point, the fish are definitely winning. So a few weeks passed and the weather became a little more agreeable that one morning I decided it was time to try it again. This time I went northeast into the Adirondack Mountains and I took my son along. If nothing else, we were determined just to have a good time. Sort of a boy's day out if you know what I mean. Plenty of gas station coffee, sweets, and a thermos full of mom's hot soup. I've got to pause this for a moment to explain something. I don't know what your thoughts are on God, but I've come to regard him pretty favorably. And I have a strange notion that he looked down on me this morning and said something along these lines. Son, you're in for a pleasant surprise today. I'm going to introduce you to Phil. And Phil is gonna show you everything you need to know about ice fishing. Anyhow, you're probably wondering, who the heck is Phil? Lucky for you, I'm gonna show you. 
Meet Phil. And by the way, don't ask me his last name because I, well, I didn't get it. Funny thing is, I almost walked past him. But I'm glad I didn't. I spent the rest of the morning and on into the afternoon learning more about ice fishing in this one experience than I've learned throughout the entire three and a half decades of my life. But even more importantly, as I sat out there on that frozen lake, I was reminded of what it takes to make a memory. My son was there with me and the wind was just right. The lake was quiet and I was surrounded by the things that I love. And even the affable banter of Phil was reminding me of how rare it is to find kindred hearts. So he says, I'll go first. How many miles from the earth to the moon? She goes, oh, I'm just in country. Intuitively, I realized that I was right smack dab in the middle of a memory. The day slowly wore on. My pile of yellow perch grew until I reached my limit of 50 fish. And then, very suddenly, that abrupt ending that we all know too well finally happened. The convulsion of reality in which you realize it's time to go. I watched as Phil packed up his gear and then ambled off across the ice toward his car. As he walked away, it dawned on me, I may never see this old timer again. To borrow a line from a Robert Frost poem, I know that way leads on to way. And truth is, I may never pass this way again. So in that moment, I do the only thing that I know to do. I purpose in my heart to be for others what Phil was for me, a mentor, a guide. Eventually, my son and I packed up our gear and headed back to the car. It was time for the long ride home. As I ride along, in my mind, I'm replaying the day's events, marveling at the outcome and thinking of the inevitable fish fry in my near future, when suddenly, out of the woods, flies a roughed grouse. And just like that, I'm yanked back into reality. The bad news is I now have a hole in the front of my car but the good news is, the protein pile is bigger, and I can now proudly announce that we have doubled the size of our menu. Anyway, I'm gonna run along now, but I wanna leave you with a simple piece of advice. Keep this in mind, and try not to forget it. The world is still full of good people, you just have to go out and find them. So turn your TV off for a while. Go out and meet somebody. I have a feeling you're in for a good surprise. And yes, of course, I get it. There's also plenty of bastards in the crowd. But for every one of them, keep in mind, there's also a fill. So until we meet again, be kindness. Be generous. Be authentic. Be the goodness that you wish to see in the people around you. And, of course, as always, thanks for the company. Phil, I can't thank you enough. Oh, my pleasure. I can't thank you enough.
real good meeting you guys. Oh, likewise, likewise. So if I were to look you up on YouTube, uh, what would I look under? Ben Orvis. Orvis? Yeah. Ben Orvis. Yeah. Okay. O-R-V-I-S.